Hi everyone, welcome to Casual Watch Talk. I'm joined by my crew here. I'm joined by Jason from Watch Rolling. Hello. And Patrick from Pocket Watch Time on YouTube. Thanks for joining me, guys. Well, we're going to do another hit or miss show because there's been a load of new watches released and quite honestly, we quite enjoy doing them. Yeah. So let us know in the comments section every time we do a watch. We'll, we'll decide amongst us what whether we think it's a hit or a miss, but you definitely let us know in the comments section whether you think these watches are hit or miss. We've got some really good picks, especially the ones that, uh, Patrick, you've got some really interesting ones. Well, yeah. shall we? Um, well, first of all, I forgot to do the wristwatch check. Should we do a rich watch, wrist watch check? Yes. Uh, go on, Patrick. We'll do, you, we'll have to start with you. you you're All in the right. bottom square. I'm uh, I'm wearing the uh, the Tudor Black Bay 925. Ooh, so. Solo layout on that. Oh, a nice um, FKM rubber strap. Is it? Oh, yeah, that. that that is a Vanguard strap. Yeah. And, uh, and actually, I think they're great. Even though what's weird about it is, I think on their website they say that it's not compatible with the 925, which is completely not true. <laughs> So uh, this uh, paid endorsement, I did get sent a Vanguard <laughs> once, uh, oh. <laughs> and I actually really liked them. In fact, I messaged yeah. them. I messaged them about when I got my date just. Were they going to do a date just one? And they said they said they're not. In fact, they're planning to do. They are planning to do more variants of different brands. But yeah, I really mm. like them. Yeah. Well, what I love about them the most is that it's a small, so I don't have all of this extra strap yeah. hanging off the side yeah. because. The majority of you know the rubber bees and the everests you know it's all one size fits all and i mean you know they make beautiful straps but come on brands give us a size small for the uh the small wristed out there what size is your wrist patrick again if you don't mind six, me asking six and a half. Oh, really i need the link dude because my wife's is like a six and a quarter mm -hmm. and that's her big problem with like rubber straps and stuff is that she's got 14 feet of stuff absolutely on. like it comes over and it's tapping it's tapping the watch on the other side and you're like dear god that's a lot so that's a wonderful strap i love you vanguard yeah, Patrick, you'll have to answer this one because I, I ask you this every single time. But uh, how's the silver holding up in terms we, of oxidization? We are getting very close to my year anniversary of this watch. I think I bought it in August. So I'm going to make a video about a year. I think I did a six month video and I'm going to do a year video. But if you zoom in real close, you know, oh, you can, oh, uh, let me go solo. You can you can see the sort of just the, the brownish tone yeah. of some of it. And, I like uh, that though. It it really isn't that bad. I mean, there's many people who are just like, "Ooh, it's not really the prettiest oxidation," but really, it it goes well with the the taupe. And the only time you can really tell it, if you look at my ring, like you know, that's what mm -hmm. it probably looked like before, yeah. and you can just see it's a little bit browner. Yeah, so, but the oxidation's different on every single different type of metal, right? Mm -hmm. So the oxidation you get on sterling silver, this composite isn't going to be the same as you would get on, say, steel or something else you know what i mean so yeah i think the, it's nice the the rumor is that there's aluminum in here versus what's usually the uh the the bonding agent in a sterling silver and so yeah. i think that's where they thought it wasn't going to tarnish but it did just not the normal sort of black tarnish that you usually get with silver but i said i like it great watch awesome jason what you were uh, what's adorning your wrist before i was so rudely interrupted last live stream where i had technical difficulties <laughs> you got off. My, yeah, please Ooh. don't. Oh, we got. Let me. Do, let's do the solo on that one. Yeah, my Bell and Ross BR zero one nine two. Look at that thing. It's on the leather strap that came with it. Super comfy. Uh, sits pretty well. Let me see. On my seven nice. and a half inch wrist. Yeah, I like this thing a lot. I, I ordered a aftermarket rubber strap. I'm just waiting for it to show up. It's it's just too hot here in Virginia. Uh, it's like. 94 degrees with 90 percent humidity and i feel like the strap would probably disintegrate if i took it outside so once i get the tropic strap i'm going to put it on and uh wear it around town i love i love it it's, it's awesome yeah it's i know 26 it's... mil look width or something 46 yeah but you know it's it's really cool. deceiving man because like i i put it next to my samurai and my wife's like oh, i think it's barely bigger than the samurai i'm like yeah and like maybe i had some kind of weird like uh case dysmorphia or something like that where i I didn't realize how big a samurai case was, but I'm like, man, samurai cases are pretty big when I held it next to this thing, you know? And this thing's way thinner than the samurai. The samurai is like, you know, that's a chunk, you know? But yeah. it's oh, really it's great, comfortable. It's a great size in your wrist, though, so it, it, it matches you perfect. Thank you very much. I, I dig this thing, man. I'm actually, 
I feel like I'm part of the cool club, Chris, with uh, club with Chris now. I have a Bell and Ross. <laughs> yeah, he loves Bell and Ross. He loves Bell and Ross. Uh, well, I'll I'll go next, and I have got my date just here, but I've been I've been filming it today, so I've actually been wearing my little metal G Shock that wasn't. I bought the metal case off Alibaba. It isn't the actual proper metal one. We need to do a video on those the the new ones that are like four thousand dollars. They're like crazy. <laughs> prices aren't they uh, they're they're weird but this is the this is the solar g-shock i think i got it for maybe 90 dollars, and then i added the case which i think was about 25 dollars. the bracelets are a bit weird on them because they adjust through tiny spring bars which is weird, weird. but uh, anyway it's uh it, it's it served me well yeah, well, that would be a great video. The four thousand dollar versus the two hundred and fifty dollar, you know, metal metal. Like, is it worth the difference? I, I I like it. Yeah, and the and the Banford one that we talked about with Ricky at Scottish Watches last week. Yeah. Uh, sorry, on the Sunday show, they had another uh, moon swatch moment. I don't know if you saw that that the they were releasing it in one store in London and it got mobbed and yeah. they had to. Yeah, unfortunately, they had to close the store and uh, Mr. Bamford was there as well. And he, he wrote a little piece about how he was upset that they had to close the store. But I think it's I just, yeah, the yeah. hype now, isn't it? I want my two minutes about that later at the end of the show. <laughs> we, we will reserve a little two minutes. But yeah. Todd, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Sorry I'm late. Yeah. Fashionably late. I'm fas <laughs> I am fashionably late. Thank just in time for a wristwatch check, though. Just oh, good. Wristwatch check. Go good. Good. So I'll do well, mine. I've got the Speedy Moon Watch ooh, again. Ooh. This is the one that you don't line up in front of Swatch to get. But, <laughs> yeah. Right? Does so it come in different like... colors? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Well, it does, but not. Rose the gold. Ones. Gold. And... You get rose gold, sienna gold. Or, it's sienna, or is it sienna gold? Is there, is there uh, proprietary? proprietary one but what's fascinating is that uh i think we posted this on discord or, or maybe it was the facebook page that that moon watch uh sales are up 50 yeah. percent since this moon swatch came out and so omega got it right and not that they got the moon swatch distribution right but the omega got it right in terms of partnering with uh swatch to create this you know affordable variant but anyhow that's what's going on yeah, in absolutely. my hotel room in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. nice. Well, should we kick the show off? Uh, yes. Michael, who's my longtime admin on the Facebook group. He does a stellar job over on there. He's wearing his Pepsi Arnie. Mm -hmm. My, um, I need to, I need to see if I can get a picture of it, but one of my bosses was in the, was a Navy SEAL in the first Gulf War, and he wore the original Arnie in the original in the first Gulf War. Which I need to get a picture of it. We oh, wow. kind of deduced which one it was. I was like, oh, "Was it in the, the one in Commando?" And he's like, "I think so." But apparently, it's really beaten up. So I, I'm I'm dying to see it. But uh, anyway, well, should we kick off our thrilling episode of Hit or Miss, Patrick? I'm going to go with one of yours first because this is absolutely crazy. This one. So here we have the. Just an amazing watch. Angels of Angel Chain of Time, is it? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's what drew you to this? Well, I'm uh I'm a fan of all watches, whether it be pocket watches or wrist watches, and I love something that's unique. So obviously I was scrolling through my many uh watch publications and I saw this. <laughs> I don't know if I need to call it monstrosity or awesome watch. I really, I don't know if I can tell you which one I like. I mean, it's, I love how unique it is, but I don't think I actually like it, which is kind of what's the, the, the hit or miss for me is, you know, I don't like that it's a 24 hour time, even though I think it's clever how they did the light numbers and the dark numbers for day and night. Yeah. And, because of the 24 hours, though, it's also like 55 millimeters long. So even on like the model, they should have gotten a guy with a big wrist. I mean, it's dwarfing his wrist in their own press shot, which, you know, is kind they of... They should have called me. I would have exactly. totally signed up for it. What are you guys doing? 
but uh, uh but i mean that i i love it and i dislike it but i absolutely love how cool unique modern it is i mean you got a a chain driven you know hour hand i said i i love it but i have some reservations yeah so uh, and it's um, it, did i read right that it's only three thousand dollars yeah it's it's relatively inexpensive oh sign me up oh wait is it the sale price 1900 us whatever I, that means it's it's oh, something that uh, was a sale price for 1900 i believe yeah, uh, I, I mean, the, it. yeah it's definitely in the low thousands i said i don't remember exactly but oh yeah sorry yeah the, there's two variants yeah three thousand hundred pieces per current okay uh, they're currently on sale. Yeah, you're right. One thousand nine hundred. The current on sales comes in a nice presentation box. Nineteen hundred dollars. I mean, I mean, yeah, not bad, I, right? I mean, honestly, twice... you yeah, you get that thing and you show up to a watch meet. And yes. then you're you're instantly competing against. Unless it looks totally dorky in real life, but yeah, you're instantly competing with the big boys up there, right? Like someone's got an MBNF. You're like, oh yeah, well check out my Angel Maverick. Absolutely. Chain I mean... watch. I mean, it's it's an Erwerk minus the Erwerk. So yeah. Yeah. that's a substantial chain, isn't it? Looking at the side profile there, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's not just for show, is it? That's yeah. Do you have to grease that chain? <laughs> Do you have to get the oil? <laughs> is there a maintenance periodicity check on that thing? Like there every, is every month, probably, you get oil. Probably a really bad maintenance period because that's the that's the dangers of going with such a small indie with such a unique watch. Yeah. I mean, if they go out. Who, who services that watch? I mean, if you took that to your local watchmaker, they'd just look at you and laugh, but it's it's kind of neat. So as I said, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity. I can't really call it a hit or a miss, but I'm going more hit than the others. What do you guys think? Hmm. I'm thinking, I think it's a hit for the money. You know, I think that's a, that's a hit to me for something. I, whether I wear it or could wear it is beside the point. You know, for yeah. both what you get the finishing it's a solita movement right so at least the movement serviceable mm -hmm. um you know yeah it's a hit for uh, me yeah i think it's a hit if you if you're really into cycling if you're one of those uh, like yeah. my sister and uh, her uh, boyfriend are real super into cycling if you like the whole cycling even if you're into motorbikes i guess as well the mm -hmm. the chain is a symbol of that so we're going to go with a, a a hit Man, we got a it, four a four run hit. That's a that's a winner winner. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we'll give Todd a few minutes to uh, before we go on to one of his. But Jason, this was one that I was going to do as well. This is oh. the the Reef GMT. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Got removable uh, bezel. Uh, you guys already know. For me, you guys already know. <laughs> you uh, the the colors told me everything I needed to know. It's uh, it's just the right amount of busy. And here's the only thing that stinks mm -hmm. is I've never held a Formex, but I know plenty of people that have gotten their hands on them. Um, I don't really dig their field watches they just released. I know a bunch of people were all over them, and, and they thought they were great. I didn't really care for them. But I remember the first time I saw a Formex diver, I felt like it had just the right amount of ruggedness combined with kind of the – uh, the fine finishing of a longines because I've seen longine divers in real life, but they're almost too nice. Like I wouldn't want to do anything with them. And then, but when I saw the Formex, like I said, it was just like, it, it looks like you could do something, but the finishing is just like barely below longines. It's not too nice. It's just nice enough to where like this person could go do something in the water in the morning, clean it up and wear it out to dinner where the longings, I don't know if I, I mean, I know they're capable, but I, it just looks so nice in person. So I'd like to see the Formex, but for me, based on the pictures on here, this is a total hit for me. It's just the right amount of busy. Mm -hmm. It's got good contrast. It's not a, a white date wheel. And uh, you, I'll go on forever. You guys go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I, it, I think it's a hit. I've, I've, again, I've not seen a, a Formex in person, but everything you hear about them is that their cases are, uh, the cases are exceptional here this one's got a removable bezel but their their watch they're well known for is has got that a spring loaded case so yeah. it actually it actually moves on your wrist the case moves up and down to give you maximum comfort the actual module inside moves up and down i think i think this is a hit i, I, I the style for me i'm not I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not totally 
convinced on the actual site I, I would probably go for oh there's their essence one there that they did yeah so i would probably go for that one and um, they usually have cosc movements in them cosc certified movements yeah i hear that the bracelets are great i was actually chatting to ricky at scottish watches about this they've just recently had one in for a review and he was he was very impressed with it that's that's my view on it two questions before i give my opinion price don't, don't, and don't, what don't. movement do they put in it I think they're Salitas, but let's have a little yeah. look. Yeah, so they're SW330s-2s, SW th uh, chronometer certified. And you look at, I think they're quite reasonable price. Yeah, 1,800 US and then 2,250, which I imagine is the one on the bracelet. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that makes it an easy choice. That's a hit for me. So, you know, the. I, I, words I say all the time is to me it looks just like a watch because it's kind of a very <laughs> you know common theme we've got a bezel we've got a this you know it, it, I'm not looking at this watch and going oh my god oh. it's amazingly different but yeah. it's very well done the way they did it and so mm -hmm. you know it's got some wings that kind of gives it a little bit of a different shape on the sides as, yeah. uh, as Jason said you know they, they took the time to give it the right color wheel you know they and the price that's a great price and as I said, I've only heard good things about Formex as a brand. So, yep, I'd give it a hit. Yeah, that probably would too. Um, although for that price, I, I think I might look at Longines too, I think. I have to look at the prices for some of the new releases. But yeah, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It looks like they have a little bit of Grand Seiko on the dial with a Batons, uh, Artemy, um, and that sort of thing. I mean, which isn't a bad thing. It, I think it's a... I think it's a, a good uh, nod to the brand a, a little bit, but um, and Formex, yeah. you're right, is supposed to be fantastic. So I'd give it a I'd give it a hit. Although I, for me personally, I, I might look at some other things in that price range first. See, and that's I'm glad you brought that up, Todd, because that's something I was talking to my my wife about the other day. Is I think we need to take a trip, you know, on top of our real vacations. But I feel like I've kind of piecemealed what I've seen of certain brands, and I haven't seen a wide enough swath of them, you know. So I told her, I said, I'd like to go somewhere to some boutiques because like Longines is one where I tend to buy watches in a physical store. They always have some, but there's only a couple. And they, and like the Hydro Conquest almost looks too nice. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it's almost like a dress watch to me, but I got to believe there's more in the lineup. And if I could go to a boutique and see that, then maybe I would see more Longines and it would change my impression because that Formex to me is just like, just on the cusp of rugged. Mm-hmm. But when you saw the back with the case back, it looked like a double ploprof, but smaller. And it looked like a star, like Star Wars ship or something. I'm yeah, like, yeah. I want that thing. You know, it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jason, I got a great idea. Come to Orlando, and uh, we'll have a casual walk, casual watch talk live live show. I'll yes. do it. Hey, that's a great idea. I actually will be in Orlando <laughs> at the end of August again. Well, there we go. So there we go. maybe oh, we man. can. Uh, I'm at the hydrate. Out. I'll have to hydrate. I have to hydrate. <laughs> well, should we go, uh, Todd? We'll go to yours now. This isn't, and this watch isn't new, but this variant of it is new, isn't it? And this is the Seiko, the Speed Timer, the with the automatic, the mm -hmm. newish automatic Seiko movement. But this one was done for the World Athletics, right? And so it's a limited edition. I think it's is it fifteen hundred. I've forgotten. Seiko limited editions are, uh, or like Omega limited editions. There's usually a lot of them. Yeah, um, twenty-seven thousand. <laughs> yeah, right. It's how many we can make? Four hundred, um, actually. So. Oh, okay. I was wrong. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Um, and which movement is in it again? I, I had to. Was it a um, the chronograph movement, the automatic chrono unit they're using now? Yeah, it's the eight R forty. Eight R. Yeah, the eight R, which is a really good movement. Um. I like the style. I'm a, I'm, I'm a chronograph nut, and this bicompax layout is always a win-win for me. Um, you know, the display case back with the uh, Olympic stuff on it, uh, Seiko's somewhat renowned for putting stuff to on display case backs that cover up what you want to see yeah. inside of the watch. Uh, Grand Seiko's been bad about that for years. But, I mean, it's expensive. I think it's 3500 yeah, it's um, uh, th 3,200 retail. 3,200, yeah. Um, limited edition, you know, they're doing an Olympic thing. I, I just think it's a very handsome watch. I love the classic pump pushers 
on this, it, you know, harks back to a vintage Hamilton or uh, Hewer or something like that, uh, or Omega. So yeah, this is, um, I, I like really like it, whether or not I'd ever spend that money for it, I don't know, but I like the watch. Yeah, for me, that's, I like it, but that's, it's one of the Seikos where you'd have to really like Seiko, I think, to, mm -hmm. because there's so many, if you're just a general watch collector, there's so many other great chronographs in that price range. I mean, you mentioned that, that Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, an Intramatic would be a strong competitor for this and it'd be less expensive. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and the, anything with yeah. the Bausch 7750 is mm -hmm. nearer the, near thereabouts, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. uh, from Hamilton, certainly, and a, f a few other brands. I like... The, I really like the style of it, but again, I mean, if if they go, if they if you do find them on the new on eBay or whatever in the two thousand five hundred price range, I think this is quite a I yeah. Think this I is think quite you're contender. right. It's probably closer to that. I mean, I get you're right. I get there's four hundred of them. You go wear this to watch me a little bit, like we just talked about with the angel chain watch. You know, no one will probably have this watch, but yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's yes. very similar, isn't it? Except it's got the the yellow, uh, the orange on the minute hand and the mm -hmm. subdials. Yeah. Cool. What does everyone else think, Patrick? What's what's your view on it? Well, I'm going to be the negative Nancy of the group for this one. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, Todd. <laughs> Just remember, when we do this, when I'm Judge Todd next time, <laughs> you're. I'm gonna. I'm gonna remember you. See, I'm gonna uh, have no, at you right. I'm, I'm gonna no bring witness intimidation. intimidation. Yeah. I'm gonna have to bring my my best A game when I come to do my uh, my pros for my next watch. Yeah, I'm mailing yeah. in my objection. I'm mailing well, in my objection. I'm gonna throw in my positives. Underwear, but go ahead. I'm gonna throw in my positives first. One, I do like the uh, the dual register chronograph. I think that looks really nice. I think the uh, the Seiko logo actually, for whatever reason, just really stands out in that one and just looks really nice. So I'm not sure. I mean, they they're not new to applied logos, but that one just looks mm. extra sweet. I mm. I really like the dial. Now the negatives. <laughs> uh, one, I'm not the biggest Chrono fan in, in the world anyway, but those pushers are way too big. So yeah. you know, I just I I can't do the uh, the thorns coming out of the side, and uh, you know there is a Hey, Oshin from the uh, the Timeless Watch Channel, he just got himself a, a spring drive chrono. And I mean, it's one of the old Grand Seikos that has just this monstrous you know, warts coming yeah. out of the side. And you're just like, no. Yeah, JLC will do that too. And I'm like, eh. So you know. they're not too bad because at least they're skinny. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're not fat and big. But to me, the 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 pushers make this a, make this a no for me. I can't okay. do it. And the price is a little high. Yeah. Jason, what's your uh, bring so, it home? What do you think? Yeah, the big push is right. But this reminds me of something like on American Pickers where you would see where they would be like, you see, I can't give you $2,000 for this because like, I'm going to need someone that likes dual register chronographs with big pushers that are really into the Olympics. And only then it's going to sit in my store for like a year or two collecting dust until I can mm -hmm. find that right person. But I love, I mean... For me, like the big pusher thing, the more and more I, 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 I'm in the hobby or whatever, I just, I'm, I don't dig them. And I'm all, it's, it's because I'm a klutz kind of, I'm kind of wide. <laughs> so I'm always afraid I'm going to bang into stuff with it, you know? So uh, I've gotten rid of all my chronographs. The only one I have is my, is my um, flight master. I don't have any more chronographs. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to go, are we going with a miss uh, on that one? Yeah, oh. yeah. I think the consensus may be a miss on that one. It's a hit for me on the History Channel. There you go. <laughs> it, by the way, Seiko's probably sold them all anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Todd, yeah. I just want you to remember that I'm not the only miss on this one. You're Judge Todd. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll, I'll, con I'll consider that evidence. Okay. Yeah. Todd's well, writing, I, writing down stuff. <laughs> well, I, I'll upset the apple cart now. Um this is the. I think this is the first time I've ever, I've ever used a watch like this on the channel to talk about. But it is a smartwatch, mm -hmm. and it's the Mont Blanc smartwatch, the Summit Three. And the only reason that I mention it is because it seems that it's the first smartwatch that somebody's bothered to make look like an actual watch. You know, instead mm -hmm. of a. I mean, this this the case shape. 
and everything looks like a Mont Blanc watch and obviously you've got all of the different different dial options it there, there seems to be a lot of time that's been spent to take a lot of the existing Mont Blanc design language instead of them creating a smartwatch that looks like a smartwatch so and $1,200 I mean it's a high for a smartwatch isn't it but it looks from all of the the images that they've done quite a good a good job of actually machining the case i mean does that i, I would never buy a smartwatch really but mm -hmm. i don't know what the what the rest of the the panel thinks there hmm. todd you're well, a Montblanc i'm gonna jump in since i'm a one block guy so and i'm not a fan of smartwatches either but i want to give this i want to give this a thumbs up in the innovative kind of alternative category if you don't like smartwatches then you know it probably doesn't matter but i think they to everything you said sam i think they did a fantastic job this looks i, I had to look at it a couple of times to say wait is this their geosphere because that's what they're copying is their geosphere watch which i love and one day i will get that one and i'm like good grief it looks just like it and i would love to see it in the flesh because it's going to be like a two-dimensional version of the geosphere but uh, and the back of it, like you said, I mean, it looks like this is, they copied all their design language and they put the sensors for it right there in the middle of the yeah. the case back like you should. And it's all stainless steel. And yeah, I mean, I don't know what the lifespan of a smartwatch is and when does it become technically no longer useful. But that is gracious, you know, that's, I mean, Tag Heuer makes one that's more expensive, I think. And it's yeah. not nearly yeah. as good looking. It's titanium, actually, Todd. Oh, it's it, titanium. It looks like it looks like stainless steel. It looks like it stainless. Titanium. Yeah. 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 Wow. I think it's a hit. So, yeah, I, I have a couple questions. I have a couple questions for the panel. Yep. So you know the whole forced obsolescence thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, <laughs> did they say how long they're going to provide updates for? Uh, what's the operating system? Mm -hmm. If it's because if it's Chrome OS, that sucks. You know, um, I'm just being honest. I mean, you know, yeah. you're talking to a guy who had a fossil smartwatch before he started collecting watches. And that thing was the worst. I just put it in recycling. It was horrible. Um, and then the screens they are showing. Those are the actual. Yeah, see. So, you get different screens. Yeah, I guess it depends on what you want. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. For me, it's a hit considering they put in enough design work to where. You know, at first glance, it looks like a real timepiece. Yeah, it does. and it's titanium. I mean, it's super light. You got to think. Uh, the strap Wear looks OS. nice. It's yeah, it's Wear OS. See, so I mean, my thing is like you're supposed to wear this thing to work out. I mean, that's what like a, a, a smartwatch is a do it all piece, right? Like when I had one back well, in the day, you'd wear it to work, you'd wear it to the gym, you'd yeah, do all those things. Like like my only other watch I brought with me this time is is my uh, Garmin GPS watch. Yeah, gotta get the reflections off of it here. You know, it's again similar thing on the back. There's my sensors. Ah, the lasers. You know, ah, you know, yeah. Star Wars. Pew pew pew. Um, <laughs> so you know, and this does all these different things. You can make the face do different. This is my workout watch. Uh, I'm not buying that Mont Blanc to work out in. I think I'm buying that Mont Blanc if I'm going into the office and I like smartwatches and it's mm -hmm. syncing up to my phone and it's doing all the things it does it monitors my health blah 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 i'm not bringing that to the gym maybe i mean maybe somebody yeah. would, but i don't know yeah. that's what patrick what do you what's what's your view on it oh, I'm, so one. I'm so afraid todd's gonna hate me after this again <laughs> but uh i, I don't I gotta, hate I, you i gotta give my positives one it's beautiful so i i can't go wrong with just saying as it, it's a beautiful watch and I'm actually pleasantly surprised by the price tag mm -hmm. because for being a Mont Blanc and being you know all that it is, twelve hundred bucks isn't that bad. But there's I can't give it a hit just because of everything else you guys talked about with the forced obsolescence. I mean, yeah. you know it's going to be a paperweight in two years, three years, and that just that hurts my feelings too much. And yeah. as a as a, a, a smartwatch ish fan because i wear one to work often because it allows me to do some things with programs and stuff like that you know it, it actually it's integrated into my workplace so i i do use a smartwatch, but i don't spend more than 250 dollars on one because yeah. i know in two three years i'm gonna have to get a new one and yeah. as i said the price is just too high and it's not Mont Blanc's fault because i think it's actually well priced it's just 
I, I can't give it a pass for that. So I still mm. have to stick with my miss. Okay, so so miss. I I think it's a hit just for smartwatch fans, but we we'll, would unanimously go with a hit and miss. I think. Yeah, we can we can call that even or something. I don't know. Well, yeah. You, well, yeah. next, Patrick. This this was this is an absolute gorgeous, gorgeous. Watch. Oh, this, this is Patrick's. I hate it. Oh no, it's the GS. Yes. Never mind. <laughs> oh, 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 oh no. So yeah, so this this beautiful thing uh, dropped in the middle of the night last night. I was just sitting there on my. Uh, on my bed, just sorting some things. And all of a sudden I see this pop up on my Instagram. I go, Whoa, this is going to be great for tomorrow's show. And of course it's a, it's a, a a bit of a overplayed another 55th anniversary limited edition. So you only turned 55 once Patrick. I know. I mean, 55, I didn't realize it was such a milestone. (laughs) It's going to be a milestone, but it's uh, five years longer than 50. Yeah, 50 I would get. Maybe even 60 I'll give you. 55 just seems a little uh, a little overdone, but you know, they they released it and what I loved about it was they released my favorite dial of all time, which is the SBGY003 dial, except now it's in my favorite color, blue. Mm. So I, I didn't even have to go any further than this on the page and already it's a hit. Yeah, it's like eight going to be at eight thousand two hundred euro. It looks like mm. so. It's it's quite the investment. I mean, it's bang. It that is almost exactly what the price of the date just is, isn't it? The date just like seven thousand nine hundred, but with the tax and everything. Yeah. Can I ask a new watch collector guy question? At eight thousand dollars, you can't you can't fit the end of the strap to the curvature of the case, <laughs> or put a date on eight, it. Eight thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean. We already know that, Sam. I'm just saying. I think I think the the curved end of a strap is starting to become my date thing for like Sam. Like, at a certain price point, I, I shouldn't see that gap there with the case. Like, if this if this strap is that special, if it's eight thousand dollars. Like, make it, you know, because I can like I can see the underside of the strap and it detracts from me mm. from the case and the dial color. Like that blue should just perfectly blend into that case. And continue on with the blue sunburst of the dial and come out the other side. But no, I get this tan line thingy, which my skin will be tan essentially, and I'll see that. So but it's beautiful, yeah. Patrick. It's well, there's 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 other there's other pictures that obviously show a little bit better reflections of the dial because you can't see too much in there. But I, I completely agree with you. The biggest gripe for me is that it's on a leather leather, you know, band. You know, if they, if they put it on a metal bracelet or, as you said, if they just kind of had a little bit more integration, that would be a, a hit even more. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, the, the, the price for me, uh, I, I think I would when I think of Grand Seiko, I always think of the that I would go for a spring drive version of it. And this is their high beat movement, which you hear is no, this, this one's spring drive. Oh, is it? Oh, really? So, but it's a, it's a hand wind. Oh, it pack. is there. Yeah. It, it does actually say it on the dial because it didn't. I just automatically thought because it didn't have the um, the uh, the energy lever, mm-hmm. the the, oh, oh, the counter, the indicator. Yeah, is it? Does it show a case back? Is it a display case back? It's a display case back. It's got a it's got a power reserve on the back. Yeah, hmm. I was looking for that. Yeah. Because the the non automatic versions of it, you can see the power reserve indicators on the back, and then you can see this beautifully finished hand wind spring drive, which is mesmerizing to watch. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 really pretty. I'm yeah, it's it's so new that I don't think a lot of places even caught up enough mm-hmm. to get good photos for us to look at, which is kind of interesting. I didn't see the word spring drive because I was distracted by the gap between the, bra- the strap and the. Case. <laughs> It's like Dave, David Letterman's teeth, right? Remember yeah, that? Right. He always had that gap there. And I got one too. Yeah. It's pretty to watch, though. Yeah. It, it what does... we're going with it. Well, I'm sorry. Then. Right. No, I sorry, was going to jump in on it and say um, if you, I have I have one of their uh, 60 month wins mine, 69. No, no. 70. I have a, a GS, a vintage GS, which is my first and only GS so far. And this follows that. I think you said it, Patrick. This follows that design language. The case wise, I mean, it's just, it seems like it's all there from what they tried to do, you know, basically, like they said 55 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it, it, and so it's the same thing, though. It, it The same thing is it's a leather band that, that does not meet up to the case, which is true of a 60s watch. Um, so 
I understand what you're saying though, Jason, a, a lot, but uh, for me, this is a hit. It's just, uh, it's gorgeous. And I, even though it's expensive, it's gorgeous and I can't help yeah. myself. Well, well, Oscar, let's size the case. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Oscar, let me answer that for you. It's 40 millimeters and it's actually the thinnest full-sized 44 GS they've ever made. It's only like 10 and a half tall, which is actually, you know, really thin for a Grand Seiko because they're sort of yeah. famous for being a little on the thick side. Yeah, a little chunky, yeah. And, I like and the case shape too. It, it, it reminded me of a, a Marathon Pilots Navigator. The case shape is very similar. You know, and maybe the Grand Seiko came first, but that's the first thing I saw when I saw mm -hmm. it was the case shape. It was like, oh, my Pilot's Navigator's shaped like that a little bit. Right. So it's it's, it's, it's very similar to the and, 62 MAS, too, in terms of, I think, the and, way the case looks. It's, yeah. Yeah. And I'll drop a casual watch reviews exclusive. I bought it last night. Oh, oh wow. What? Hey. <laughs> this, the Grand Seiko? Uh-huh. I'll give you this. So... so uh, so yeah, any sentencing I was going to pronounce upon you, uh, Jason, is now has now been uh, 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 removed, right? Yes, I'm, I'm glad that majority wise you gave it a hit because otherwise I would have had to cry in the corner. Look, Todd. Ooh. No, I. Oh, uh, you rock, dude! You rock that Bell and Ross. Oh, it looks Jason. great. You it. It absolutely great. rock that. Thank to you, me, it looks you. like I'm in handcuffs. You know, yeah. it's like take me away, officer. But you. Um, and that works great on do you like and you really like the leather strap don't you oh Isn't yeah i nice? just wish it, i just wish it wasn't so hot here so i, I ordered yeah. a. it is wonderful it's it's supple i don't use that word very often this <laughs> leather strap is supple but it's uh like i ordered a, it's a word yeah, you don't, don't use often yeah you don't use it <laughs> yes. I, oh go ahead sorry Sam. no sorry i was gonna say um well we've got another question here how is it that you can get a quartz wall clock with a smooth sweeping second hand for next to nothing but you can't get a quartz watch with that feature you can get a quartz watch with that feature wallbrook make a a watch three-hander that uses the mecha quartz movement where the central second hand sweeps like an automatic yeah. hand so check that out wallbrook skin diver their quartz watch has a sweeping second hand and the reason actually that wall clocks sweep is because they put an, a lot larger gear mechanism in them to make it because they've got yeah. more space to play with yeah, so that's power. how yeah they're more and more power so that's how they make it uh, make it sweep but the Todd, lunar pilot does the same thing the below the lunar pilot that right. thing almost all the high frequency, high frequency yeah all the high frequency three handers yeah and right and, yeah. and that one does it right and you can get that for like just so you know zero i don't know if you've ever seen it but you can get the below the lunar pilot like on a good day on amazon for like 300 bucks mm -hmm. and that nice. thing's movement is just like the case is beautiful the crystal is beautiful right. i had one but i sold it but it's it a nice. big boy though it's it's the, it's, it's the thick. lug to lug is what 51 52 yeah. so you just got a half of the wrist for it yeah We've got quite a few more watches to get through, so let's um, yes. let's go with let's Todd's pick next. Um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this name. Is it Corano? Corano, I believe. Corano. Corano. Tokyo. Yeah. Um, Todd, what this to me? This looks like a watch from a micro brand. It just I've seen a few of these that look similar to this, but mm -hmm. what what appealed to you about this one? I mean, the dial's pretty cool. Where the the numbers right. are obviously. Uh, well, Corono is a, is a, he's, it's not a, it's kind of a micro brand, but he's a, he's a true watch artisan and he's been making some um, like really high end stuff. Uh, if I'm thinking of the wrong, I'm going to make sure I've got the same watch designer in my head in Japan. Uh, and, but he's been putting out some more reasonable stuff and he, it, everything he puts out, it sells out virtually instantly. So a while back he put out a chronograph. That was, I forgot how much it was. It was recently priced. Um, there wasn't a custom movement in it. I forgot which movement he had in it, but it was one of those things where, you know, as soon as the time hit, you know, you're sitting there hitting buy, 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 buy. It's like getting concert tickets, you know, for some band, something. You're hitting buy, buy, buy. And I actually had it in my cart, but it wouldn't complete. And then they ended up selling out in like three minutes. Um, well, that's okay. I ended up buying the Mont Blanc instead, but, <laughs> you know, used, used Mont Blanc instead. Um, but uh, I mean, these are uh, beautiful. Dials. I think he does enamel dials. The, everything's heat, you know, the blued hands are heat treated. It's not a lot of money. But what I was going to say, actually, I, I brought this up is as much as I, you know, love this manufacturer and what he brings to the table, I think he missed it with the 34 inch. Yeah. I think that, yeah. and, and so I, I think this is monochrome, right? Talked about it and said, you know, a lot of people like the 34. I'm like an ah, no. 38, 36, isn't it? 38, yeah. maybe 36, 38 would be real sweet for this watch. 34 to me, 
is not a i kind of brought it up in a way is that it had so much promise to me it's a miss because it's a 34 yeah i i totally yeah. agree i think 36 i think 36 is the new unisex size isn't it mm -hmm. 34 is i would say is definitely more of a feminine size or, or less i think 36 mm -hmm. is the 36 to 40 is the like the universe unisex design now because i think even a lot i was watching a hodinky episode today and the had two sisters on and one of them wears a daytona all the time and i think and he also i used to work with um somebody and she had a uh she wore a submariner so there's definitely a trend for bigger mm -hmm. watches across the board i think 34 is a miss but, but by everything you've said it sounds like a stunning watch yeah watch what he else they, they put out uh it's really going to be great but this one i think is a miss yeah what do you think mm -hmm. jason do i think everything aesthetically is freaking sweet i mean it's I, now i know they're slightly different but that mustard or gold mm -hmm. i don't know what color is that that thing to me i mean the 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 script for the name, the script for the automatic, mm -hmm. the the font for the numbers, and the contrast with the white uh, was a concentric ring around it, mm -hmm. and then the way the case frames it. Everything about that is just really now. That to me would be if it was forty millimeters, and that's the thing. Like my wife, she that's her sweet spot. Thirty nine forty is what she mm -hmm. likes to wear. Um, it, she wears glasses, maybe like something too small she can't see or something, or has a hard time seeing. Um, but I think if that thing was like 38, 39, 40, mm -hmm. I would probably have to get her one just for a surprise because it's it's just got like almost is it um, almost Art Deco almost yeah I was gonna say it's a little bit like it yeah, especially man. this mustard one doesn't it hit Art Deco like I can see a Hamilton yeah. from the 30s which it's I have the... a pocket watch at home with that like I'd, yeah. see, I'd see the same thing and the hands and if those are mm -hmm. fired hands and I know how that blue looks. Yep. You know, and and I think the the one understated design element on this was the case back. Like how it's just this plain Jane case back and it mm -hmm. basically tells you, it screams at you to look at that dial. Like there's nothing going on back here. Look at my dial. It's awesome. It's just <laughs> too bad. It's the same size as a dime and you can't see anything. But yeah, Patrick, pretty... what's your what's your view on it? Well, my, my quick take is it's a miss, and uh, and that's because I don't really understand the Corona Tokyo philosophy. So I know Corona is uh, a master watchmaker, and he makes masterful movements, but then he pretty much said, but I want people who don't buy masterful watches to have not masterful watches. So now he makes sort of a basic watch with a basic movement with just his name on it, and I don't really get it. Like, if I want a Salvador Dali, I'm not going to go buy a lithograph, also known as a poster, and call it a Dali. It's a poster. And so <laughs> I, I guess I'm just I guess I'm just turned off sort of by the whole concept of just it's a well made watch. I know it's got good QC, all of that, but I just don't like it. If if Rolex made, you know, Rolex light and sold it in their stores. I, I think most of us, if that was written on the, the dial, would not like that. Well, I was going to say, we call it Tudor, right? No, I I'm, sorry, that. Kidding. Oh, hey, I'm no. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, so but we're going to go. The, the dials are fun. So I at least give them points yeah. because it's a fun dial. And you're right, complete miss on the sizing. But uh, but I said, I still have to give an overall miss. Okay. Yeah, so the BDEV saying that 34 millimeters works in Japan. Yeah, which I, may, exactly. Very well, it might well be. So we're all going we're unanimous with a miss, are we? Yeah. A miss, but it, if it was on at 40 or 38, 39 for a thousand something, make a 40. Yeah. <laughs> well, make a Jason, you've got a really cool next one, haven't you? And this is this is quite the eye opener. This is the <laughs> Maurice across um, the I Acon one. And is it, it's a famous, obviously, a famous graffiti. A gra graffiti artist that's recreated this but what i mean other than the obvious what drew you towards this watch uh so i i think it's fun for i mean for me it's a hit because i you know i used to i can draw and i can paint and all that stuff and so when i was young i used to you know never illegally but i would just you know, quote unquote tag and do all that stuff and i've always you know i read a little bit of the write-up and it's not like taking itself super seriously it's fun and, and I think that this falls into a category kind of like uh, the chronograph that we saw earlier or, 
even that Grand Seiko, it, it's a very specific area. Like that Grand Seiko is like a legitimate, like super, I think super duper dress piece, right? Like you're not wearing that to go hiking in a mountain. You're, you're wearing that, like you can wear it every day. And I think this would be something like on Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, you're having fun with it. You know, they're not going to have, they literally have the graffiti artist in the write-up. They don't have some guy scaling a mountain trying to tell you, Oh yeah, look at this uh, cool <laughs> wash that you can barely tell. And, and and I know some people are gonna say, "Well, you can't tell the time." Come on, we we all know a dial where the hands are. You can look in there, and unless you're launching nuclear missiles, you're within enough time to get to where you gotta go. So I just think it's fun. To me, it's a hit. It looks like something. If you had a good watch collection, you wanted to add a pop of color that was some fun, even if it was small. I think that might be kind of the charm too. Um, that it's a hit for me. It's fun yeah i like it and for you know 825 us dollars i don't mm. think that's uh that's too bad is it um i presume it's automatic oh it's um it is a quartz movement yeah. in there but i i like i like this i'm a big fan of sort of graffiti pop art i liked when tag did the the collaboration with um alec monopoly is it and i've, I've been to see yeah. those murals that they've got in Austin and places like that. I th I think it's fun. I think this is you're right. This is this is bang on the sort of the a luxury brand making a fashion not a fashion watch but a fashionable watch. Yeah. That's, and that's they're not I raking mean. you over the coals a bit like you said the price. They're not raking you over the coals for this thing. You know what I mean? And I always like we always talk about like I always joke about the poor kid in me, but 825 bucks is attainable if I work. Yeah. Like maybe I work a whole summer and they don't sell a bunch of them. Or they don't make a limited edition. And, and you could actually pick one up and have a something kind of cool. Yeah, so it was. And I think so the black it... bezel, from an artistic standpoint, frames the picture and it separates it from the the rest of the case and the band. It draws your focus to all the colors inside instead of the two colors on the outside. That's mm -hmm. just my take. Yeah, I agree with that. No, I agree with it, and also it, it grounds the. It gets around the idea that you can't really tell the time on it because obviously you can you know you can tell where 12 6 and 2 and 4 and 8 yeah. and you know, so on um uh, hmm. patrick what do you what's your view on this one i'm a surprising hit for this and yeah. uh, really it was based on i didn't know the price and you know maurice lacroix makes beautiful watches and the icons of beautiful watch generally and you know they they just made an uh, Maurice Lacroix moon swatch. They they just said let's put some fun colors in it and make it a quartz and and make a, a, a sort of a higher end version of it. And they did it and they did it well. So would I wear it? Absolutely not. Do I think it's great? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's perhaps like a sw like the swatches that I've got that I, I bought an art swatch for a Damien Hirst one that I would never wear. Maybe this is a similar thing. But Todd, what's your uh, what's your view on this? Bring it home. What do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna bring it home. I'll be the I'll be the uh, grumpy old man here a little bit. Um, <laughs> no, it, it's a miss to me. Uh, I understand what they're doing. I, I mean, I like it. I mean, overall, I like it. I, Maurice Lacroix. I agree with what you're saying, Patrick. I think they make a lot of good watches that don't necessarily get a lot of good publicity. Um, but the thing that I think it misses on the price, the reason is I'm looking at this and I'm seeing swatch. I'm seeing basic quartz movement, plastic case. Uh, the dial is probably, I mean, it, I, I agree with the, the artistry of the dial is certainly, you know, something interesting and, and superbly done by, by somebody who does this sort of thing. But to me, this is a $150 watch, you know, in terms of, and how much did it cost to make is probably pretty low. That, that's my issue with it is it's, it kind of reminds me of a swatch, which is fine, but it's priced too high for that for me. Okay. So I paid got... the extra 500 bucks to get it online because you probably can. Unlike the moon swatch. <laughs> unlike moon swatch. Right. Yeah. So we got, we've got three hits and one miss on that one. So we'll call yeah. it a, a hit. hit. Overall. You guys, you guys win. I'm okay. <laughs> Well, let me, um, I'm going to, I'll just, we'll have to quick fire some of these. So we'll quick fire this one, but this was, this was my next pick. And this was actually suggested by somebody on the Facebook group or an article on the Facebook group. And this is the Arte Green Diver. But what, obviously what makes it unique is the fact that it's $30,000 and that Ooh. the piece is entirely sapphire. Um, I couldn't it's... actually... 
<laughs> yeah, I couldn't actually, fa- even the crown yeah. it looks like is sapphire, and I couldn't find, I don't, I think this is a pre-order because I can't find any images of it, but I did find the image of a previous one that they did that was all sapphire. So they do, they do make sapphire, and I know Hublot's made fully sapphire case watches, yeah. but they also made an interesting watch that has a depth gauge on it, but I, I picked this one just because uh, in, in-house movement, but Thirty thousand dollars. I mean, is there a gap in the market for a sapphire case dive watch? I mean, it doesn't add anything to the actual functionality. I'm guessing. I'd be interested to see the sapphire bezel and how it rotates uh, the mechanism. But maybe I, I'll go with it. It's a miss for me. But I just so quirky. I had to pick it. I stunned that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's a hit for me. Because <laughs> it's it's obnoxious. I mean, come on! You show up to a watch meet, and you're like, "Oh yeah, well, my whole watch is sapphire." You know what I mean? Ooh. Now you bang it on a doorknob and it shatters, but that's besides the point. And say if you spent ten ten thousand for that sapphire watch, maybe, but thirty, ooh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, so, uh, no. Well, I'll Re- I'll save some time in the thing. Miss, miss, and miss. Yeah, I'll say this too. For that much money, it's very odd. It's very interesting. So is an Etzel. Um, <laughs> it's you know, it's just yeah, not for 30, uh, 30 grand. You're right. You hit a doorknob with it, and the whole thing shatters. Could you I imagine mean, the first time you're like, ah? I don't know. <laughs> well, Patrick, your last one, and this is a quirky one, so I'm interested to know wh- how you came up with this one. Ooh. <laughs> As I said, it just uh, it just popped up on uh, on some of the watch literature. So uh, I can't say the brand name to save my life, like Sarpaneva. I- I'm not even sure. Stepan uh, Sarpaneva. Yeah. Stepan Sarpaneva. Stepan Sarpaneva. Yeah. But he's known for that face, and he makes moon phases, and he always puts that sort of grumpy, evil face in it. And I think that's kind of cool. It's it kind of reminds me of um, uh, Koduke and sort of his little little uh, etchings or whatever you want to call it. But then I saw this thing and I was just like, okay, it's too much because you've got some weird owl staring at you and I don't really understand why. I know why. The... You want to know why? You want to know why, Patrick? Because it's going to make someone say, who? And they're going to say, <laughs> step on Saranova. And then they're like, oh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, but as I said, I just I saw this. I, I actually think the if you cover up the dial and you just look at the watch case, it's a really cool case. Yeah, case I mean, look at sweet. the fun angles on there, the fun lugs. You know, I said he really makes some really cool watches, but this one is not. <laughs> watch and, uh, Their there, watch there, is judging you. So why'd you buy yeah. me? Yeah. There, oh. there should be a loom shot on the picture, though. The loom shot is oh, pretty cool, it. though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Uh, oh, here we go. Is this the loom oh, shot? Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at that. That is cool. So, I like said, the eyes. That, that makes me want to hate it less, but it's still a solid miss. <laughs> And and what's I, I did I did check the price out before. Oh yeah, so it's it's going to be about twenty thousand US. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> so uh, what what are we going for on this one, guys? A hit or a miss? So I'm going to give a secret ballot right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, this yeah, is a thumbs down. Miss miss miss. miss. Uh, it was a hit for me because I saw a horned owl with my wife this weekend. So I'm always down <laughs> for a horned owl. <laughs> Great and the owl told you to spend twenty thousand dollars on a on a walk. Come out to uh, come out near Philly, Jason. There's there's a university called Temple, and yeah. they have yeah owls. They... owls. So yes. you can go and see all the owls you want. Jason, if you come home with that watch and tell her that you spent twenty grand, <laughs> it'll be an ex-wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh... I'll be living with that owl. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh. Todd, your next one is mm. a, a well-known brand. It's a Zenith. It's a good-looking mm-hmm. watch. What's uh, what drew you to to this one? Is it the is it got a new movement in it? Or? So it's got an old movement. So yeah, pop oh. on that movement for a second. So what they did is they somewhere I, I don't know when they found these movements. Maybe it was a while ago, but they they found I think eleven of them, and they made ten of them in their watches. These, it's the it's the one thirty-five tax zero, I believe, is the um, right, 135 tax zero is the movement number. Um, 
and it's small in the print there in front of me. But uh, these were for the observatory trials that Zenith competed in from 1950, I believe, to 1954. Mm -hmm. And they wiped the uh, wiped the competition with these with these movements. So these movements were never cased. They never were designed to go into a watch. They were used only to compete on the trials. And they found these, uh, Zenith did at some point. And they uh, they worked with, um, yeah, expensive. Is, this is the ultimate in terms of limited release. They only made 10 into watches. I think they kept one of the movements. And they, uh, they worked with one of the renowned uh, uh, chronograph and, 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 you know, watchmakers, and, and his name is there. If you go to the back of it, if you show the back uh, cover, it's a, it's a, yeah, if you can blow that up. Yeah, it's not, it's not letting me for some reason. Oh, oh, it's, it's, oh there, you go, there you go. There it is. So you can see on the very bottom of it. So it's Kerry, uh, I'll try to say the name right, Vutelainen. Maybe Landing. pretty close. Oh, yeah, pretty close. Landing. And it's with actually partnered with Phillips uh, Box and Russo, too. So they all three of them. So it's Zenith, Kari of uh, Lennon and uh, Phillips Box and Russo went to went in together. And what uh, Kari's you know, watch organization did is they went and disassembled all of them. They actually decorated them because they were never designed again to be oh. seen. And uh, they put them all back together. And so that you can see there it's one of ten. And they don't even mention the price. I don't even want to know what they are. But uh, to me, this is a, a really huge hit to bring back these observatory trial movements and put them into watches and then, you know, and then sell them out. Now, this is obviously only for the, the most well-heeled watch buyer. I think it's gorgeous. Um, you know, it harks back to something that's a little art deco, something that's period correct. But you can see where it says observatory chronometra. Above the yeah. zenith, that's the nod to the actual movement. So if you have one of these, you are one of 10 in the world that has this much rich history of horology that's on your wrist. And in other words, you have a movement that won the chronometric chronometric trials back in the 50s. Wow, nice. it's like proper stealth wealth, isn't it? This is Steve? stealth wealth here, baby. If these aren't six figures, I, I want to guess they're a quarter million each. I, I have no idea. I'm going to yeah. guess they're somewhere in there just because of the history and um, the exclusivity exclusivity of it. Yeah. But what I don't I know. Love is it's got the uh, the movement number on the dial. I think that's mm -hmm. just so cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I love absolutely. it. So we're going to go with a with a hit unanimous uh, on that one. Uh, but just imagine that. Uh, it's going to be very, very expensive. Yeah. Anytime you put a virtuoso pocket watch into a watch, I'm a fan. Yeah. So, right. So this will go right. I don't know how big they were, but to your point, Patrick, these were, you know, were from something like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, then, Jason, your last one on here is yes. one that you spotted on Instagram. And, and I thought that you just spot it on Instagram and screenshot it, but because it doesn't seem to exist anywhere else. No, online, I looked, I, I searched, I mean, I was looking everywhere. I saw this thing and I was like, okay, so it's a sumo case, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Sign, right, me um... Sign me up. I don't even care. Like I tried to find this thing online. I was yeah, like, sumo. I want a big fat watch and I want it to be that one. It's got <laughs> yeah. the, it's got that dark blue gradient that we saw with another watch a couple of weeks ago, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Four o'clock crown. Like, come on, give me some. It's going to be overpriced. I know the bracelet's going to suck because it's Seiko. I might even have a misalignment issue, and I don't care because beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and this thing is beautiful to me. Yeah, that dial will be spectacular. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they they can't make a bad dial, Seiko. They're that good at it. So yeah, um, and mm -hmm. completely right. It'll be priced a little too high, but you're right. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's a hit. Yeah, I agree completely. There, this is the proportions are right. You're uh, you're right. The sumo is is a is a perfect watch for this. I think they've done some of their uh, turtles with a similar dial, uh, the gradient dial. Um, but yeah, this is an absolute hit. Yeah. Cool. And then the last one from me is the new NASA color coded to the jumpsuits of the astronauts, the new NASA G shock. Now it's $170, which sounds expensive for this watch but it's actually got the full the full trifecta it's got the multi-band six it's got nice. the top solar i like what they've done here 
Um, a good friend to the show, Sunil, he actually, he he really liked, I've just bought this for, for him. He's going to, oh, because he can't Sunil, get it in yeah. Australia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm like, he's going to let me review it as well first, but I think they've done a really good job of this because the last yeah. NASA one they did was white and I, I didn't mm-hmm. love what they did with it. This actually tells a little bit more of a story, I think. Mm-hmm. I want to go last. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, then, Patrick, you're going to have to go then. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm not a big fan of G-Shock as a general rule. However, I think this one's really awesome. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how, how much vitamin C, B-Dev? I don't, uh, all of it, I would say. <laughs> Tang color. Tang. <laughs> Tang. <laughs> yeah, I think this is, I, I'm with Patrick. I think this is a hit. It does what G-Shocks are supposed to do, is that be reasonably priced, very highly functional instruments. 177 bucks is not bad at all. Yeah. Uh, the NASA nod, the orange, I think it's, yeah, it's cool. I, I, I've done work for for nasa and this is all cool stuff yeah and this watch as well this watch or variants of it are actually authorized by nasa this watch has yes. probably been into space as, as, as yeah, g-shocks have been in the space a lot I yeah and wait. it's this one as well so it's not just they're not just they've not just licensed the name and plastered it on it's mm-hmm. got some real space space chops as the um as this as this it's gonna be the cheapest stuff. space watch you can probably buy yeah oh yeah absolutely. Uh, easily right I'm gonna tie this all together right now. You ready? You go, boy. Yes. Okay, Sam. Can I? You bought this online? Yes. You didn't have to fight anybody. Nope. It's got actual provenance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not just a color swap of an original design that really doesn't do anything other than the standard G-Shock, right? Yes, that's so. Correct. I'm gonna yeah. wrap up my two minutes here. The yeah. guys that did the band for release, you can learn from this. And in a day and age, as a former mil- retired military guy where we live with the information superhighway, you you saw what happened to Mo- Omega and Swatch's release. You saw the problems that your audience, your demographic, ran into trying to get one of these things. Yet they can release this watch, which has got the six band, it's tough solar, it's got all this cool stuff, actually used by astronauts, and I can get it for 170 bucks. There's no excuse, and nothing you say afterwards is going to cover up the fact that you could have spent five minutes to think about that release before you did it. Five minutes. You could have hired a 15 or 16 year old on Fiverr to create a website that actually worked and sold the watches. So I don't understand. Like when I saw this one, when you posted, I was like, I could go buy this right now. And it's cooler than that other G shock, which I already had. But the only difference is, is there's blue lettering. Uh, yeah. It. Yeah. So you're talking about the, we talking about the, the Bamford, which yeah. seems to be another repeat mm-hmm. of and, the, uh... and my thing is I'm not trying to be hard, right? I'm probably going to burn a bridge by saying this, but come on, man. Like, each one of us does project management in some way, shape, or form. I'm pretty sure in our job, right? Mm-hmm. Manage the project, manage mm-hmm. it. You know, you could, you could, you could have just sold them online and said there's a queue and there's a wait list. Helm does it all the time, and no one gets mad about it. And the irony mm-hmm. of it is that people are not very civil to each other online. But if you sell your watch online, everyone's going to be civil because they're not outside one store trying to fight oh, to get a watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they are going to be selling this online, aren't they? But who yeah. who knows? I mean that the initial the initial one was at one store, but yeah, you. I mean we covered this on Sunday. This is other than it being the Bamford, this is the the most basic of yeah. G Shocks that you can get. It's got non no solar, no multi band six. It's it's really other than the three different shades of blue. It's. Uh, yeah. So that one's a hit. The the orange is a hit. The yes. blue, the bonus blue <laughs> is a miss. Yeah, and apologies to anyone that takes offense to that. I might have sound a little a little passionate, but when I saw that happening, I just don't. We our information moves too fast nowadays, mm-hmm. and you pay a lot of people to do a certain job, and and I'm pretty sure all of us know you know young people that might have been excited to get that, and then. What if they were at the line line in the store having to deal with this problem? Simply saying you're sorry at that point doesn't cut it because it's not like you didn't have an example before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, the police, the police definitely shut this yeah. down. And the other the other Bamford one that they did sell online through Houdinki sold out in seconds, so they yeah. know that there's a. It, you know, a funny thing actually I saw today when I was looking for, I was actually looking to see whether there's still some of those original Bamfords on eBay. What there is a lot of is the John Mayer ones. There's 
there's loads of them on eBay, the white ones. So, mm. and they're not going for like a lot of money. They're, they're, they're going for like, two, you can get them for like 250 bucks, which is over what they originally went for. But certainly the Bamford version of this, the previous Bamford version, they're still going in the 800s. So it really shows that sometimes these limited editions that they, that they kind of play the market with don't always, um, don't always win. But anyway, well, guys, that was really cool. Then we did another hit or miss show. Thank you for all of the comments that came through. Really appreciate everyone's participation. I forget to say this, but please like if you can give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as well. Really help us out. Uh, thank you to all of my guests. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Jason. We always, as always, we appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time on Casual Watch Talk Live. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good evening.